Hello, greetings, and welcome to Dividend Blasters. This is our 12th video for the channel. Today's topic is great monthly dividend paying investments. Disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. The purpose of this video is for information and education. This reflects my own personal opinions. So please do your own research and consult a licensed professional financial advisor prior to making financial decisions. This is what I do. I've been an investor for more than 30 years. However, before I make a decision, I pick up the phone, I call my investment advisor, and I talk it over with them. That's what they're there for. Take advantage of them. It's the prudent thing to do. So uh, quickly, um, this is the criteria that I typically use when I am choosing a dividend growth investment. Dividend yield, 2 to 3% range. Dividend growth rate for the last five years, 7 8%. I like to see that 10% hurdle rate met or exceeded. Dividend payout ratio, 20 to 60% range. However, for REITs, it's a little different. That's going to come into play here tonight. Dividend growth streak, minimum of five years. I, that's what I like, uh, no matter what. Uh, other key metrics, sufficient and growing revenue, earnings, cash flow. I want to see robust growing cash flow. Cash flow is the lifeblood of a company. You need to have cash flow to keep it going and to make sure that they can maintain and continue to sustain a continued growing dividend plus manageable debt levels. Okay, before uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna talk a little bit uh, before I go to the next slide. Um, I'm gonna share with you two monthly dividend paying investments. Now, having said that, and having gone through the criteria again for dividend growth investments, I am going to tell you that these two I don't look at these necessarily as dividend growth investments. The first one, not. Uh, uh, and the second one, uh, too early to tell. Um, so I look at them more as dividend income investments. So higher yield, lower growth rate. Okay. So the first one is a REIT, a real estate investment trust. The second one is an ETF. They both pay monthly dividend payments. Now, I got to tell you, I don't have a lot of monthly um, dividend investment uh, stock or ETF in my portfolio, but I do have these. Um, I've always been a little bit skeptical of some of the investments that uh, fall into these monthly paying, um, you know, dividend paying, um, you know, investments, if you will. Uh, they tend to be, you know, REITs. Uh, now, this read is good. Uh, there's a couple that I like out there. This one I like. Um, some of the business development companies which uh, have high yields, um, I'm a little skeptical because I think they're a little bit risky. Uh, when I see a high yield, I may not see a high growth rate. Uh, they're inverted from our rule. And I also don't see a long sustainable dividend growth streak. So I kind of look at those as, well, maybe those are just more dividend income it can be a little bit risky. I don't think these are risky or nearly as risky. These are um, much more stable, uh, and that's why I like them. And I like I like the monthly dividend. Um, now, when I bought the REIT uh, a few years ago, my expectations were it's going to be steady growth. It's not going to be rocket a rocket ship. It's not a moonshot. Uh, and the, the dividend yield, I'm expecting it to increase, and it does, okay? But these are not huge increases, okay? But they're increases, and that's good enough for me. So let's get to that first one. The first one is Realty Income, ticker symbol O. Um, and, and you know what? Having gone through that criteria again, um, I need to also look behind the metrics. So... For a REIT, I am looking at things like occupancy rates, uh, and I'm looking at length of leases. So, for instance, if you take a look at the first graphic, you're going to see that historically, and even in their worst years, 
their occupancy rate is sky high. So historically, their uh, realty income occupancy rate is over 98%. Um, their competitors in the S&P 500, 94.5%. Now, I got this from their website, but I, I did some digging, and these are these are uh, accurate representations. Um, so that's, you know, huge, uh, especially when you're talking about a company that has almost 12,000 properties and over 200 million square feet of rental space that they manage, that they own and manage. Okay, that's a ton of money. That's a ton of rental payments. The difference between 98% and 94%. Personally, I would rather invest in a company that has a 98% occupancy rate because their revenue is going to be more stable, more sustainable, um, and and it's going to be higher. And that's going to translate into better dividend payments for me. One other thing to, to remember, REITs do not, they do not pay federal income tax. They are exempt on the condition that they pay out more than 90% of their profits to their shareholders. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> that's why a lot of folks like these investments. Uh, you're going to get a nice, steady stream of income. Um, and and you know what I like about realty income? They are a dividend aristocrat. They have been increasing their dividends for 26 consecutive years. A uh, little background. They're known as the, quote, monthly dividend company. And they've had that name trademarked. So they own that name. Uh, they're a member of the S&P 500 and the S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrat Index. And if you watch the last few videos, you'll you'll know that. I've mentioned that uh, previously. Um, they have increased their dividend payment 119 times since they went public in 1994. And uh, they've made 629 consecutive monthly dividends. So pretty awesome and that's since december 2022 okay good um they're a commercial reit and you know what i like about them they're not just in the united states they actually have property in the united kingdom and in spain and you know what i really like about these guys they are known as what is called a triple net lease reit so basically unlike other REITs, a lot of other REITs, their tenants, okay, the folks that are renting from them, the Targets, the FedExes, uh, the BJ Wholesales, the Walgreens Boots Alliance, the 7-Elevens, the CVSs and the Walmarts, those tenants are paying taxes. They're paying for the taxes, okay? Realty income is not. They're also paying maintenance and utilities. <laughs> Realty income is not. These are smart, smart business people. I like the way they do business. Um, that, to me, is reassurance that I'm going to get a steady stream of dividend payments. And I have. I get 12 every year, and it grows every year. And I reinvest 100% of my dividend payment each and every month back into my holdings. Uh, next metric uh, graphic is just basically... Um, I think that it's abundantly clear that they have been increasing their their dividend uh, fairly, um, you know, consistently. Four point four percent. Okay, so it's it's not bad. It's not seven or eight percent, but it's you know four point four percent is good, and you're starting with a pretty decent yield of four point seven percent. So, you you know what? I mean, that's more than nine percent, um, and it's a REIT. Uh, you, you don't typically will, are going to see that. Uh, and what you're really not going to see, and you only see with a handful of them, are these continuous uh, dividend growth uh, streak that they're on. So, uh, you know, some folks are going to disagree. They're going to say, no, it's a dividend growth stock. Well, I, I, you know what? I wouldn't argue about it. I see it as a dividend income stock that is growing. Uh, so there, how's that? <laughs> You know, I like this here, and this is the last uh, graphic that I got from their website. Um, you know, and it's really just a comparison um, of the lease uh, criteria that 
realty income has with its tenants versus maybe most shopping centers and malls in the United States. So initially, they will have a, a length of a lease of greater than 10 years. So they're going to lock in like a Walmart or a Target or a CVS for more than 10 years. Uh, if you're in a shopping mall, those tenants get a better deal or a shorter lease. Um, you know, realty income is, is locking them in there. Um, realty income has a much higher gross margin uh, with their tenants, 98%. Versus if you're in a shopping mall, it's the mall management companies, maybe 75%. Uh, lower volatility of income, I believe that. Just based on what I've read and what I've researched, uh, reliance on anchor tenants, they don't have any. They're not in malls. They're in freestanding structures. Um, the, the retail property size is smaller and it's fungible. So they could rent to a Walgreens. They could rent to... The same space to a CVS or a 7-Eleven or a dollar store. It probably makes no difference. And they're not huge spaces, uh, but they've got a lot of them. They've got, uh, let's see, as of last year, 2022, they had over 11,000 properties, 213 million square feet. That's amazing. All right. Here's some of the metrics, uh, and I did allude to the dividend yield of 4.7%. So for every share you own, you're going to get three bucks and five cents a share. Um, uh, the growth rate or the CAGR is a little less; it's 3.8%. That's really why I'm calling it a dividend income investment. But add them up, and you're at uh, you're at 8.1%. That's you know. That's pretty decent. But what I love, love, love is that dividend growth streak of 26 years. Um, you know what? Take a look at how they do against their competitors. Uh, their growth rate of 3.8% is more than double uh, the folks in their sector. So 3.8% versus 1.5%. So they're growing. They are growing their dividend. And, and you know what? If they weren't, they wouldn't be an aristocrat. They pay out monthly uh, their next... Uh, dividend payment is coming out March 15th. If you wanted to uh, get in there, uh, it's going ex-dividend uh, February 28th. If you miss it, it's okay. It's going to pay again in a few weeks. So uh, the nice thing about the monthly dividend company. Uh, trading at 64.98 as of yesterday, uh, the 24th of February. Um, the range is not bad. It's kind of smack dab in, in the middle of the, the, the one-year range between 55 and 76. Uh, market cap, 43 billion. Um, they don't use a P&E ratio or a um, earnings per share. Uh, uh, they use um, uh, funds from operations or FFO, which is like a cash flow uh, metric, if you will. And uh, uh, they use uh, a price per funds from operations, uh, which is sort of like a P&E ratio. Um, and, you know, you can compare these to other uh, competitors, and, and Seeking Alpha has that information. But I can tell you it's pretty decent. Um, take a look at the beta. And we have beta for 60 months and 24 months. Um, both are less than their competitors. So remember, beta... If for stock is basically a comparison of the risk or volatility relative to the S&P 500. S&P 500 is considered a 1.0. This is considered a less volatile uh, investment uh, instrument than the S&P 500. And it, it actually has gone down uh, from the last five years to the last two years. You can see it right there from 0.8 to 0.62. Pretty good. Our friends over at Seeking Alpha, uh, who uh, study realty income pretty closely, are rating it as a buy. I do like that. And if you take a look at the at the price performance for the last year versus the last five years, you will see last year was a tough year. They did retreat a little, a little more than 1%. Not bad. I mean, the, the, the chart to the left looks a little bit more volatile than a 1% decrease, but it did go down a lot and it recovered some So uh, from the beginning of the year. So not bad. Um, 
you're still getting your dividend payment, which is nice. Uh, and that's the beauty of dividend in investing. Uh, you're you're uh, investing for a nice steady stream of income. Uh, and if there's capital appreciation, that's even better. Uh, the last five years, they gained over 38%. Um, I tend to like to look at longer time horizons. Of course, I want to look at what's going on now and in the recent past, but what's going on over the longer term? And in the longer term, they did well. All right, so that was realty income. Next one is JEPI. This is an ETF, JP Morgan Equity Premium ETF. And JEPI uh, is, is unique among uh, ETFs. It's a, it's a very successful and it's a new ETF. It's been on the scene for about two years. Uh, they've come up in a big way. Uh, they're the new kid on the block, if you will. Um, you can see right there that they got a high yield of 11.93%. You might ask, hey, is this a yield trap? Uh, I, I don't think so. Um, they have, uh, now there's not enough detail or not enough history to go back five years and look at a, a Kager for five years, but I looked at the trending 12-month growth rate of the dividend is 50%. I, I want to see, I would like to see what it's at two years and three years, but um, I don't think it'll be 50%, but, you know, we'll see. Um, I, I got to tell you, um, they're killing their competitors. Um, the sector uh, median for five years is 15%. Now, I think that the, the, the Kager will come down a little bit, but we'll, We'll see, but you know what I like? For every share you get, you're going to get 643 uh, uh, dividend for each share. So uh, I like that. Uh, you you put in $5,500, you're going to get um, 100 shares. Uh, you're going to get 643 bucks um, in dividend income for a year. I like that. Now dividend pay payout ratio, we don't look at that for an ETF. So I have an NA there. Uh, they've been operating for two years. They've been increasing for two years. There are a monthly uh, dividend uh, investment um, price 5385 uh, the range for the last year 4992 to 6260 so they're a little bit towards the lower end um, there is no market cap for an ETF we look at assets under management it's 21 billion so it's it's a good size uh, compared to some of the other ETFs that have been around longer it's small uh, but it's more nimble I think um so the schwab uh, dividend etf is about 40 i want to say 40 billion but they've been around longer they've been around at least 10 years so these guys are growing really quickly and they're traded heavily my understanding is they are traded more heavily than schwab um, a lot of people are getting into it now one thing to mention is that the expense ratio for this etf is a little bit higher than some of the others uh, that's because there's an active management of this ETF. So, you know, how, let me an, let me ask a question to answer why is that the uh, ratio so high? Uh, the question: How do they afford this yield of 11.93 percent? Well, listen, they are generating income through a combination of buying large U.S. cap stocks, like other ETFs, okay, other successful ETFs, but they're also selling options okay that's work there's a lot of work involved and they got a team that does that uh and through the combination of both those activities they're delivering a pretty decent monthly income stream uh, from stock dividends and selling option premiums so i mean that's how it's done so you know think of it like this for every ten thousand dollars you put in there you're paying 35 bucks okay if you buy schwab uh, $10,000 of the Schwab dividend ETF, uh, you pay six bucks. Okay, so it's $29. I, I'm fine with that. Um, you know, here for an ETF, there's no beta. We're looking at something called standard deviation, and that's really a measure of volatility. And standard deviation is basically um, comparing uh, present returns, okay, price returns, uh, against historical returns. So um, 
The mean is historical returns. The, uh, the current returns are about 15 standard deviations uh, around the mean. That sounds kind of volatile, and it, it, I think it is, uh, but look at what its competitors are doing. It's 24 uh, standard deviations. So, you know, they have fluctuated between 49.92 and 62.60 uh, over the last year. Um, I, I got to tell you, I feel kind of whipsawed um, as an investor. Uh, and so that doesn't really phase me that much because I've seen so much. Um, I, I was a big investor in Tesla, uh, uh, but I got out fairly early, <laughs> maybe not early enough, but um, maybe I'll go back in. But uh, so, you know, I've, I've, I've kind of been through some of that stuff. Um, I think that this is a fairly decent, uh, stable investment, and I like their holdings. I'm going to share with you a little bit of information on their holdings. Uh, they're mostly, I believe, in financials, if you can see the screen, and I can see it, but I've got a printout, and I'm using that. Financials and industrials, so industrials are going to be They're not listed in the top 10, but they are there. But they've got healthcare, so we know they have AbbVie and they have United Health Group. Uh, the financials, of course, I see Progressive and I see Travelers. Um, technology, I see both Visa and MasterCard. Um, and they've got consumer uh, stock. Uh, so Coca Cola and Pepsi. Oh, look, they got Bristol Myers Squibb. So, you know, these are big companies. They're decent companies. These are not companies that are going to go out of business. They're going to be around and they're going to pay dividends. Uh, and they have been paying dividends. AbbVie is a, a dividend aristocrat. Um, Coca Cola is a dividend king. Pepsi is a dividend aristocrat on the verge of being a dividend king. So these are really solid companies. And they have over 131 companies they invested in. This is just the top 10. You know what I like, though, is that not any one single company is occupying more than 2% of their holdings. This is a very well-diversified, managed ETF, if you will. Our friends at Seeking Alpha are rating this as a buy. And if you look at the last year and then the last two years, we don't have the last five. They've only been operating the last two. Um, well, they lost about 8% last year, okay? That, to me, is symptomatic of what's going on in the market. Uh, but if you look at the last two years, they gained about, it's like 5%. So anyway. Uh, I would say to wrap this up, I, I'm fine with this. I typically don't invest in monthly dividend investments. I like the quarterlies because I think, not that I uh, you know, don't like to get a monthly payment. Um, there's a couple of these that I do like, which I just went through, but uh, just some of the other companies that are in this uh, monthly payout mode, uh, they don't appeal to me. But these two do. So anyway, I would say take a look at them. And uh, if you're interested, talk to your, your advisor and uh, go for it. Listen, have a great evening and hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have, I would ask if you could give us a quick like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have a friend or a family member that would like this video, share it with them. Have a great evening and God bless.